What's going on beautiful people? Welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. So today we're doing a simple scape for guppies. Loads of people love guppies. Like when you first get into the hobby, you tend to go for guppies. And before getting these fish, you would have likely come across some aquascapes on YouTube. And this is hopefully where I can come in. Now, not everyone wants to go spending tons of money on a complicated equipment when they first get some guppies, you know, and a sort of medium sized tank. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do it nice and cheaply, but still look really good, impactful, and just something you can have in your living space that you can love, enjoy, and hopefully that'll then allow you to go on and develop you know the hobby into more higher tech that kind of thing because let's face it the cost goes up as you sort of get further down the rabbit hole that's the same with anything though isn't it so i'm deliberately doing the build with one of the most common sized tanks i can find it's just a two foot by one foot by one foot 60 centimeters 30 centimeters 30 centimeters that's not exact but you know roughly now hold up a second i know that this tank looks expensive but to be honest it's just a generic glass box unbranded and not expensive at all. I built my own stand, cheap lighting and a cheap external filter. But for you, you can buy whatever tank you want. It doesn't have to be rimless like this one and it can be smaller, a bit larger, whatever suits your budget. Works out about 90 liters, I think. Obviously we're gonna have decoration there. It won't be completely full, so it's probably gonna be around 75 to 80 liters of water volume. But I've also got a very cheap filter running as well, which holds a little bit more water. If you're wondering, this stand, I built this stand myself. Um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed to be honest, considering I'm so poor at carpentry, but it's got some little magnets at the front here. Um, yeah, it's not so quality hidden behind, but it, it does the job really well anyway. And in there, look, we've got a really, really cheap filter. It's been unplugged just to get some oxygen going into it whilst we're doing the build so that all the bacteria inside doesn't die because it had it running on a previous setup. That inline thing there that you can barely see is actually a heater. Um, I had that in a previous uh, location, but I don't need it in here because the whole room is heated. These inlet and outlet come separately. I'll leave a link to those and they just attach to the hoses. Um, the actual filter comes with a kit that has this, but it doesn't look as nice. So I swapped them out for the stainless. And the reason I like the stainless is that you can't see dirty pipe work with it. It just, it looks gleaming all the time, except for that little bit of algae that I've just left. Never mind. And in keeping with the low tech and budget theme, this light here is one of the cheapest lights I can find and the one that works best, to be honest. It can grow any plants. Sometimes you can double it up and have two, uh, then it stops being low, low budget, doesn't it? <laughs> if you've got two of everything, but it'll work well with just the one. And I'll leave a link to this. I think it's only available in the UK, but I'll have a look. If not, I'll leave an alternative I know is good for our American friends. European wise, I, I don't know. I mean, I could go on forever, couldn't I? <laughs> I'll just leave some links and pick the ones you can. Now I usually start with a whole substrate system on the bottom and then I build up from there. But in this case, I wanna start with a hardscape first, get a great structure and then keep it really, really simple for newcomers, people trying to first aquascape and just put aquasol at the back, like the standard way. It works well, so why not? So today's video is sponsored by API and Aquarian and uh, yeah throughout the video I'm going to be using various products from both the companies they have been sponsoring us for several years now it's because of that we can have these amazing tanks all around us in these awesome studios and I never mind doing sponsored videos at all because I really don't have to sell this stuff to you guys as I will say the tanks speak for themselves they sell themselves like the, all of these products are so good like look at it look at this one here you just set it up and away it goes set it up with the right products and just leave it to do its thing and you end up with beautiful, healthy fish and beautiful plants. I mean, woof. So again, a massive thank you to API and Aquarium for sponsoring today's video. On with the show. Okay, we've got some nice little bits of wood there I've just chucked down. More wood there than we've got stones. Um, it often works quite well if you do more of one than the other. I, I don't know why. Um, I've just always found that. And you can always add more of anything at any point, remember. So you, you don't have to stick to what you've got, provided you've got more, of course, which is why I always say, if you go to the fish shop, um, just buy a bit of wood every time you go there, and then it doesn't work out too expensive to get a nice collection going. There's some grubby stuff on this I'll need to wipe off, but yeah, I've used this a while ago. can't even remember when, but I like it. I like the, you know, it looks like dramatic, doesn't it? Don't know how it's going to go yet at all, but get some in and uh, see how it sits. So I want to go for some kind of island composition, not that. <laughs> I just want to get them in to start with. Actually, it might be that. I don't even know yet. So the standard way of doing an island composition is you put your wood and that in the centre 
and then you can build your rocks around it and then a substrate around that. For me, that currently has got no sort of real direction. So if I spin that, I've already got two pieces then going roughly, you know what I mean? Like there's offshoots going in similar ways. It doesn't have to be like that though. You can do it however you want. It's always just a case of messing around with everything and seeing what you like best. What I've done there is try to go from small, medium, large, and it just sort of continues a the theme. And then I'd like a smaller one over this side possibly. Bring it around there. Not like that. <laughs> Right, the key though is now we've made a start and we've got all of our wood in and now we can start jigging around with it and just seeing what fits and what you like most. I don't really like that to me, it looks too, too straight liney. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. But in, for instance, just by bringing this maybe to the back and one of them to the forward, to the foreground, sorry, we've already got better lines there, much better. Don't really know what I'm doing this little bit yet, but it'll, it'll reveal itself. Sometimes you just gotta play around and then all of a sudden, it, you know, it just clicks into place. Well, that's quite cool. <laughs> Maybe that one like that. See how that looks. Right, we're getting somewhere. Not there though, because these are just too straight for me. Um, I'd like to see that one at more of an angle. Maybe one of them could be straight, but but not two, because it looks just, it just wouldn't happen, would it? <laughs> so we are kind of getting there, but I now want to use rocks underneath just to bring some height to some of them. I'm liking this middle section now. I just want that up. You know, just, just more height to it. If you can get more height to your aquascape, it looks so much more impactful than if you just keep it all down low. If there's one thing I can say, like if you're really struggling with what to do, buy oversized pieces of wooden rock. Um, rock you can break down, but even a big piece of wood on its own just looks good once you've got plants all around it. You can't really go wrong with that. So yeah, it's this piece here that I want to raise up. Move that out of the way a bit. Put the rock underneath it. There we go, straight away. One at the back as well. And that gives us our platform. And this one can come further in the foreground. Has that worked? Yep, straight away, that is so much better. We've got different levels of height, which means we can add different interest points as well, you know? So we can add some uh, trident fern or something like that. Some kind of fern there, some bulbitis in there and up there bit of moss wrapped around. That's what I'm getting at. You've just got multiple points where you can add interest now. This is doing nothing though. I need to do something with that. Definitely needs to be there. What shall we do with you? <laughs> In like that. Like I say, just mess around with it and it will, it will jump out at you eventually. Oh, there we go. I am liking that. We have got that flat edge there look though, which looks awful, but that's fine because we can fill it in with the rocks. I've got quite a few more to choose from. I think I've got some more dotted around the studios as well. So yeah, just keep going with the rocks now. Fill out all those gaps, you know, and add like a sort of border and a nice beached area with interest. Sometimes I like to bring rocks out into the foreground as well so I can put things like Boost Philandra on them. They're just really good. There we go, there's the basic hardscape sorted. Now stuff might, you might see stuff sort of shuffling about a little bit as we go, but I'll keep that main sort of structure going. I think it looks great. The only thing I don't like is that the uh, rocks down here all look kind of flat, but once we've got some substrate here and we can raise it up a little bit and place some things underneath some of them that will get hidden in the sand. But to start with, I'm just gonna stick with that. Um, I kind of want to glue the wood together now so that it doesn't float up later on. To do that, we use uh, Cyanoacrylate Super Glue Gel. So yeah, it's just this stuff. It's the one I use, the Gorilla one. Um, it's the gel, remember. I use the gel because it just blobs. You can either use the gel or you can use the runny stuff. If you use the runny stuff, then you need to put tissue in between the gaps and then put glue on the tissue. And that works really well as, as well. But this stuff's all quite close to each other. I've got some good points, so the gel is all I need. Right, that is all now glued down. You can see there that white patch right there. I did use a little bit of tissue to fill some of the gaps in. Then I used some of the liquid super glue and a syringe and just syringed it all over the paper and then it just sets rock hard after a while. Um, you can accelerate it with an accelerator, which is this one here. Um, you spray that and it goes instantly hard. It's so quick and good. Like, look at this. All that stuck to the rock, that side, and this side stuck to 
this rock. That's not going anywhere. Right, next up, it's time to start adding in our substrate. And I'm starting at the back, so Aquasoil. Aquasoil is gonna fill that back area. It should look really good. But before we put it down, I wanna put in some added nutrients. And the first supplement I'm adding in is API's Root Tabs. I use these on every single build. Um, as a lot of you have seen a lot of my tanks, they look really good, right? Well, long-term nutrients is the key to that. Put this down at the bottom, the roots find it, it's so good. It's like iron and potassium. You can crumble it, you can place it in water, you know, after a certain amount of time. If your soil's run out of nutrients, you can just push it into the soil. Or I like to just start it, just get things going straight away, get that growth and you're on to success straight away with the root tabs. So for this size tank, we have got 10 tabs in there. I'm gonna use eight. I'm gonna use four in this front section, crumbled down because we're not gonna have a deep amount of sand. Then I'm gonna use four in the back section as well. But each time, that I use one I'm gonna crumble it in half so just give them a snap and then you've got like one there and one there but that's not what I'm gonna do I'm just doing that to show you I'm gonna crumble it in the front um, but I'll pick I'll take those pieces now and just place them in the back area and I'm gonna do that four times look so that's one broken in half stick one there and there push that back a bit further another one there another one there there we go we're covered for nutrients in that corner and in this corner as well whoops and then in the foreground area we can add the pestle and mortar which has got food in it currently <laughs> and then in the foreground area we can add some tabs to three I think three will be enough just like that crush them down like that and then just sprinkle it all over this foreground area now I'm not like planning on planting lots here but I'm planning on adding some sort of creeping plants, you know, like hair grass and that kind of, oh, a little bit too much there, that's fine. <laughs> so this will just add nutrients underneath the sand. because obviously there's gonna be no aqua soil in this area. Push some of that that way, there we go. And that should all stay right on the bottom then and not spoil the look of the clean sand. So that's the kind of prep work done, now we can get the soil in. So the aqua soil is in. Um, I'm using the Oase stuff this time. It's all I could get hold of. Uh, I ran out and I didn't realize, so I went to the shop and got the Oase one. So it's got more of a brown tinge than I'm used to, but I'm gonna cover it in plants anyway, so you're not even gonna see. But you'll notice there that like, I've banked it up at the back. This is to give us planting depth and also a good amount of soil then. You know, rather than just a little tiny bit, we've got double the amount of soil. Why do we want double the amount of soil? It's because it brings the pH down. Lower pH means less chance of algae, less chance of harmful ammonia, overall plant health just way better. So that's why you want to use as much as you can. Usually I put it in plastic bags, um, Ziploc bags, they're not plastic bags, <laughs> but they're made of plastic and they're perforated. And then I lock them down and put sand on the top. Just want to try something different this time. I've got a whole bag available, pretty much use the whole bag and uh, that's where we're at. Now I'm going to bring some into the foreground as well, just a shallow part underneath some of these rocks. And then we can go on top of that with our decorative stones and sort of brush it back up there just to blend it in. You'll see what I mean in a minute. <laughs> so yeah, like I say, just a little bit more in this foreground area in between the gaps. Got to be careful though, because I don't want it spilling into the, uh, the proper foreground, because I want that completely clear. A little bit's fine though. Not gonna hurt at all. And the last little bit over this side. This is quite difficult with this big jug. I'm trying to also fill in any gaps that's in between the rocks and the wood because we don't want any detritus getting stuck there later on, do we? Oh, I was so careful and then I did that. It's all right. That's nicely stuck as well now. Everything's stuck down. Okay, next up is our gravel and I've gone for this really sort of, I suppose it's a coarse sand or a very fine gravel. Um, it's kind of like an off-white different flecks and colors in it should work well with what we're going for and we want to start right in the foreground against the glass and let it just sort of fall back there we go and then it covers over all the uh, root crush root tab as well which is what we want because we want the nutrients to be right underneath it it's very bright but obviously as the water sort of goes more mature um, it'll sort of decolor and we'll probably have to clean it up a little bit which is fine we you know we can do our maintenance I was also going to have a lot of greens planted into it as well. I'm going to bring a good amount of planting into this foreground area, I think. Not right at the very front, but you know, around all these rocks at least anyway. It should look really, really good. I'm going to go with about half an inch of depth at that front. I don't like to go completely minimal. Some people have like that everywhere. 
um, like all the way across, but I like to go a little bit of depth. I just think it frames the whole scape a lot better, but that's just personal choice. Oh yes, I think it's looking good. Next up is detail stones in and amongst the rocks we've placed in there. I'm gonna put another rock in that gap, I think, and that's gonna add a little bit more um, sort of, I don't know, it's gonna bring the scape forward a little bit, but without impacting on that area. I still wanna open, but still wanna bring the eyes forwards. Maybe this one here, maybe this is too big. No, I think that actually works. Push it in a little bit so it looks like it's actually been sunken in and been there for a long time. Yeah, I think that works well. And it also means I can put more sand here for more planting. Actually, looking from this angle, I need to twist it slightly. That's better, much better. Yeah, so detail stones around those rocks. I've got this here, so hang on. Look at that, massive contrast to the sand and slightly different to the rocks, but not vastly different. That's what I've always found works best with your detail stones. And you guys know what we need to do by now. That's it, chuck them in. <laughs> Look at that, straight away, it looks realistic. To a point, I mean, apparently you get more sand up against the rocks than you do coarser gravel, but that's not how we do it. <laughs> I just think it looks better this way personally. It's up to you though, you can completely scatter it wherever you want. I just like to keep them nice and tight to the rocks. Just find that it, it works a bit better. So when you've done like that, look, that's, that's incredibly neat. I just grab a little pinch, you know, just grade it out that way a little bit. Not too much, but enough filling in the gaps as well with these coarser stones. Again, it adds more planting sort of media, but also stops uh, detritus collecting in those pockets. Oh yeah, don't forget to take a brush and flick off the sand that's all over your wood. You don't have to, but if you do, it stops it just floating wherever it wants later on. You can just flick it onto the soil, it doesn't matter, it doesn't, it's not gonna hurt it at all. Right, we are looking solid. It is now time to crack on with the planting. I'm gonna start right in the center, or, you know, in the wood structure in the center. I'm gonna go for some focal points, main focal points straight away, and that will be, you guessed it, a fern. Always start with my fern and then just sort of work around it. I think I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna keep it quite low in these little gaps and some bulbitis as well. The two go really well together, and then we can move on from there. Right, so here is the first fern, which is a Windelov fern. I think I've got a couple of pieces actually. Yeah, I've got a couple of pieces there. So I'm gonna wedge one in this gap. Oh, there we go, get it in that gap. Now I wanna push it into the gap so that it sort of sits upright and forwards. So that way we're getting all the nice bits at the foreground. There we go, I think that section looks good. I'm gonna go for like smaller pieces in uh, different points and I think that should work well rather than one big main bit and that'll it'll build up so it looks like one piece though. I like that section on that side and now I've got a little bit of trident fern and windle off there, little baby one, look, that's one that's grown off of a dead leaf. So recycling, awesome. And I think for that one I'm gonna, that area is too small. I'm gonna do one down here. I might have to glue that piece there. Um, I'll leave it there for now and glue it in a little bit. Find a bigger piece for this section. Ah oh, yes, here we go. Again, a mix of Windelov and the Trident Fern. I think that's wedged in nicely. Yeah, it seems to be. Shouldn't go anywhere. Nice. Okay, loving that so far. Got sort of a Jurassic look to it. And then in some of the smaller gaps down the bottom, we can put some Anubius. Smaller leaf stuff because it's a, it's a smaller tank, really. Big tanks, you can get away with big leafed. Uh, plants I feel like but if you look like little dainty details on all of the leaves so far So you want to keep that going and this one going in here is a Nubius Petite a couple of little sort of yellower leaves um, But that's a good focal point there, and it's just Continuing the green up some of the wood also covering up the areas where we used the glue because that was quite ugly And then a nice little piece of Booster for lounge right in that central piece. Look at that, ties it all in beautifully. And now we can make a start on some planting. I wanna put in some foreground plants first, just to sort of give it that detail in that area. Not too many, because we do wanna see the white sand and the border between the main island as well. So up here, I've got a load of sort of shorter plants all in the pots from Tropica. These are the one, two grow, which means they're pest free. 
been sat here for quite a while, so some of them might be on the turn, but uh, this Halanthium tenelin that we can see here green, that's definitely usable. That's gonna look great. Um, they've been sat here for nearly a month, but all looking still green, great roots. So we should be absolutely fine, to be honest. This one's got, the Glossostigma's got a little bit of sort of melting on those top bits, but the main bulk of the plant looks really good. So the root system. So yeah, I'm just gonna put them all in. <laughs> Right, that is sweet. We can now move on to some of the background stem plants and the fast growing plants and some crypts as well, actually. And this is what I've got. I went to Maidenhead Aquatics and trimmed out some of the some of these plants here from some of the displays that we've done. So we've got some Rotala rotundifolia, we've got some Limnophila, we've got some Hygrophila polysperma, and then I picked out some crypts and then some Liliopsis brasiliensis as well. So all of these are going and that then should be enough. There's quite a lot of stems there actually. They're quite compact together. So yeah, it should look good. Right, that's all of our planting done. It's now time to fill it up before these plants dry out. I've been spraying them, but you know, stem plants, especially the ones, the finer ones at the back there, they dry up pretty quick. So let's fill it up and then we don't have to worry about it and get the filter on as well. So we've got the tank filling up behind us and it's now time to add another product. We are adding Aqua Essential. This stuff is brilliant. It covers everything you need to make your tap water safe. It's basically an all-in-one. So it detoxifies ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. It removes chlorine, chloramine, and heavy metals. Basically, it binds the heavy metals. Your filter takes them out, and then you clean your filter. And it's good for freshwater and saltwater aquariums. It's so, so good. Aqua Essential. It's really good for emergencies, you see. If you get a bad reading of something, you could do a water change, add the right amount of this, and then you're all sorted. Combine this with your test kit. Hang on. There it is, the freshwater master test kit. Combine these two together and you really are off to a winning start with any tank that you're gonna make. Oh yeah, I've just used this little bit of like filter media there, filter sponge, just to stop the water from disturbing everything. Look at that, works so good. And the water is so clear. So we now need to treat the water with the Aqua Essential. Now you don't need to use a lot of this at all for taking out the chlorine and chloramines. In fact, that's about all I need. Look at that tiny little drop. That bottle's gonna last me for ages, so you're gonna get really good value for money there. Top, top stuff, well done API. Now also, while the water's filling up, we want to add in some leaf zone as well, which is fertilizer. We've got some brand new one, two grow plants there, which have been in like a real high nutrient gel. So we want to put some nutrients into the water column as well as what, as what we put under with the root tabs. So for this size tank, I just like to do a capful. Whoops, there we go, one capful. And now it doesn't have to have it because we've got an established filter, but every time I do a new setup, I always use Quick Start. It's beneficial bacteria. It's gonna just go over everything, even more in the filter, basically like an insurance to make sure that any fish you put in there be absolutely fine. So a couple of caps of that as well. Awesome, we are filled up. Look at that, it looks so good, doesn't it? The pops of Rotala rotundifolia coming through there. Very pink because it's close to the light in the shop. It's not actually the HR, which would be bright red. Um, poke if I can bring that out. I think some of it's trapped. Anyway, now we can switch the filter on. Some gunk will probably come out, but that's good. It's gonna you know, get everything cycling even quicker. The tank cycling, that is. I mean, the filter already is. So just everything established, if you know what I mean. All right, switching the filter on. Like I said, there'll be some gunk. There we go. <laughs> So we've got a little bit of misting there now and there's lots of micro bubbles. I'm gonna put in some AccuClear and this means that by the time we go get some fish and come back, it's gonna be like, uh, ugh, you won't, it won't even look like there's water in there. So this right here is AccuClear, it's powerful stuff. You only need a tiny amount of it. And what it does is it clumps all the particles together, the filter takes them out and then the fine pad inside the filter just locks it all in. Like I say, you do not need a lot of it. So for this size tank, I need like 2.5 mil, that's too much. It's literally that, and that's enough. Again, great value. This bottle has lasted me so long. So the tank is absolutely perfect, ready for the fish. Let's go to the shop and pick them up. Fish, shop, Matt. Hi. <laughs> we interrupt you at this key working time. Matt's doing work is what I'm trying to say. But he was ignoring me, so I thought I'd just start filming, and then that might- ignoring you. <laughs> I know, but it might coax you into getting some guppies for me. My guppy tank is ready. 
Martin's ordered me a ton of special ones, yep. and that's for another project we've got coming up. So Ooh, oh, oh, oh. yeah, but we're not talking about that yet. This is for a different tank. So have we got some nice guppies in? I mean, I know you're not a massive, <laughs> massive no, guppy no, I'm fan. I'm a big guppy fan. You are? Yeah, I love guppies. No, you're just saying that's that because the camera... That was my main thing that I used to keep when I first got into fish keeping was guppies. Well, oh, that's right. one of many, but yeah, that was, that was, I really loved them. I'm getting confused when you said... Like, oh, people come and they want one guppy, they want one neon, oh, yeah, no, that's and they want, they want one, and you, it creates a ton of work for you, doesn't it? It creates a ton of work, and those poor fish live, live on their own. So we, <laughs> we do recommend not to do that. <laughs> but no, we've got some nice ones in, I think. Okay, cool. Hopefully. Well, we were going to have a look at the real nice sort of quality tanks, yeah, but uh, yeah, someone's got... Made a you've made a filthy. <laughs> uh, it's not too bad. Oh, 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 I'm already seeing some nice, just very, 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 what am I trying to say, Matt? Variated. No. Variations, in variations, color. yeah, variations. Yeah. And I actually quite like these as well. Look at those with the with the reds on it. I'm going to go all male, I think. Yeah. Just because we can get a ton of color. Yep. And there's not just going to be constant babies everywhere. Yeah, I, this is probably <laughs> a better way if you wanted to keep it a bit more simple. Then yeah, just all males is ideal. So yeah, I'm not going to like zoom in on them or anything yet, Matt. I'm, no. I'm just going to pick out a selection because we'll be able to see them in the tank. Yep. I would also like uh, two of the little bristle noses. Yes, like, of course. And then. Three autos. Yep. And then five Amanos as well, please. Two, three, and five, all right. Yeah, I did also notice <laughs> over here, do you know what I'm going to say? Uh, no. There's a whole batch of pygmy. Oh, yeah. Look, just a few, just a little group of those. A little group of pygmies in there just with them. Just a bit of interest down the bottom yeah, and like mid, 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 mid level. I think that'd be quite cool. Yeah, I like that. I think that'd be a good idea. Right, wicked. Bag them up. Whilst we're oh. at the shop, Matt's just getting all this gear together to pick the fish up. Um, but or catch the fish. Yeah. Uh, we just looked over here, and look, the dual cichlids have got babies right in that back corner. So hopefully, hopefully this time they don't bring them round to the front yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> they can survive. Yeah, hopefully they keep them there. But we'll see. We'll see. They're not very. They're not very clever yet. But they normally take them a few attempts before they get it right. Yeah. All right. Well, that last time I came in, I saw a load of eggs on one of the rocks at the back, but they didn't even get fertilized. So this happens so fast. Yeah. It could be a different pair, to be fair, it couldn't it? It is a different pair. All oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, that exactly. explains it then. That does, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise they'd be like machines. <laughs> they would, yeah, yeah, just pumping them out. <laughs> So we are back in the studio. As you can see, the fish have been temperature acclimated now for about, well, you can't see they've been acclimated for 20 minutes, but trust me, they have been acclimated for 20 minutes. The light was off, it's now on, and we can put them all straight in. Now, I'm not worried about mixing any of the water or anything like that. I fully trust the shop that I go to all the time and all the staff, and I know how everything works in there. Plus, all these fish are from the same system, so th this is their quarantine, if you like. <laughs> it's gonna look so good. Right, I'm just gonna release them all, one species at a time and can't wait to see how they look in there. So in first, I think should go the five Amanos, let them find their own little place to hide and they should be nice and safe then from any fish. To be honest, these are good size Amanos. I, I keep saying I'm gonna get new scissors and I never do, <laughs> so bad. Yeah, they're good size Amanos so they're not gonna be affected by any of the fish that are in here. Like, yeah, they're way too big for the guppies, look. There we go, yeah, good. Now there's not gonna be much food from at the moment, but we can sort that later on, we can supplement for them, but it's gonna get enough of a coating on everything in no time at all. Now next up in this little one, I've got two baby bristle nose plecos, so I'm gonna put them in. We didn't wanna start with big ones. These guys, there'll be plenty of enough food for just these two little ones as they grow, and they'll just keep the tank nice and clean for us. There we go. Oh, I've got the knack of it now with these scissors, it's just at the tip. <laughs> and in you go as well. Come on guys. Oh, they, I knew this would happen, they're gonna get stuck there. Down you go, bit of gravel, that's all right. It all adds to the texture. Right now, moving on to the pygmy curries and the ottos, they're in here as well. Whee! <laughs> yes. We don't want to go for too big of a number. Is that otto in there still? There you come, good boy. Oh yes, that baby uh, whistle nose coming right to the foreground straight away. It's a good size actually, it's about the perfect size. The other one's a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Oh, look at that, there he is right there. So, so tiny. And the pygmies have all hidden. Probably gone to the back somewhere. They'll be out in a minute. It's all good, it's all good. Okay, and last but not least at all, the stars of the show, the guppy, standard male. Everyone's gonna pick these at some point, aren't they? 
Beautiful. Look at that, complete mix. I asked Matt to get me a complete mix. Yep, everything is out. Check, nothing's caught. Oh, we're all good. Yay! <laughs> oh, wow, we've got lots going on at the moment. So the Amanos, they're sort of shooting everywhere. Just while they get settled, they'll be fine. It's just uh, just getting comfortable with their surroundings. Brand new home for them, isn't it, you know? And at the back there, look, we've got all of the guppies. Again, they're just going to move around a bit weird for a minute, but, you know, give it a little bit of time and they'll be, like, settled and looking beautiful. All in the foreground. Whoa! Loads going on. Oh, look, there's a pygmy coming forward. Oh, it's gonna be so cool when it all settled in a little bit. So another thing that I always like to do when I put in new fish is feed the tank. And for the guppies, we have got Aquarian Tropical Flake Food, tropical and temperate, so, you know, it covers both. Um, the, you can see here, look, it's an awesome flake. It's big sizes, but you can just crumble it between your fingers, which is what I like to do for the smaller fish. I like to put it in the water and then, I'll show you in a minute anyway. And then for all the others, we have got the algae wafers. Break these up into smaller pieces, dot them about, the Amano's then, the bristle nose, and even the Corys, to be honest, they'll pick at everything, scavenge from everything, uh, just whilst the tank is all getting sort of settled in. But this is a great supplement anyway for any of the shrimp. My um, actual cherry shrimp tanks, they go mad for this stuff. It goes straight away. So yeah, Aquarian nailing it with the food as usual. So yeah, the reason I like to feed my fish straight away is just so that they're kind of comfortable instantly. And then they know that there's no sort of threats apart from me now putting my hands in. But they'll, you know, they'll get relaxed straight away if they know that there's a bit of food dotted around for them. Look at that. And if they eat, they're definitely comfortable. And they're all eating. Yay! <laughs> and then not to forget the algae wafers as well. We've not got a huge amount of stuff in there, so I'm just going to go with one wafer for now. But I'm going to break it up into like four pieces and just dot that around the front. And it all sinks as well, which is good. Five pieces in fact, oh, six pieces in fact. Look at that. So all the Amanos will get on it and everything. So everyone's covered for food now, which is awesome. And the guppies are going everywhere. <laughs> So Matt kind of proved my point when I went to visit him and straight away he said guppies were my first fish. I think they're pretty much my first fish as well, most people's first fish. But when I first got them, I had them in the tank for the plastic plants, which is fair enough. But what I'm trying to do is show you a way of doing it that makes it so much more enjoyable. Not only can you watch your fish grow and develop, and if you've got females have babies as well, but you can watch the tank develop as well. And having this many plants with a medium level of light means minimal maintenance. To be honest, all I'm gonna really need to be doing in this tank is trimming the plants and giving the glass a little wipe down probably once a month, once every two weeks to start with. So, so simple and more about the enjoyment of the tank than like a full on hobby sort of tank. With a full-on hobby tank, you're just doing stuff constantly. Now I realize not everyone's fully into it like that. Most of us will be though, and we actually like tinkering with our tanks non-stop. Now there are so many different types of guppies now. These ones here are just sort of mixes, to be honest. They're not like special breeds, but you can get special strains that have got specific markings, like rare markings. Gonna be looking at getting something like that later on to go on a bigger project, something really cool that I've got lined up. But for this one, I just wanted to make a tank that you could do, just go into your shop, buying the plants, some of the hardscape there, and the fish that they've got in stock. Pretty much every fish shop will have some guppies, won't they? And the good thing is you can just choose your favorites out of the bunch. Now, if you watch this video and you're tempted to do your first planted tank, make sure you save a good third of your budget just for the plants. I cannot emphasize that much. They are so key in the success of a planted aquarium, obviously, because they're the plants. <laughs> But what I mean is if you don't put enough in, you'll probably end up getting algae problems. You'll have to keep cleaning it, that's gonna annoy you, and you'll probably just stop. If you start with a good amount of plant mass, then you're just gonna be winning straight away. The plant's gonna use any excess nutrients in the water column, they're gonna grow, and it's just gonna look so good and go from strength to strength. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will be sure to see you on the next one.